Hey, I get my jacket this time. Yeah, that's right. Your smoking jacket. <laughs> <laughs> this is my five-timer. It's like your uh, Saturday Night Live <laughs> yeah, smoking jacket. Right? Yeah. The spike points. Welcome to the Art of Custom from Hibbs Homes. Hi, everyone. My name is Kim Hibbs, the host of the Art of Custom. And we have a special bonus episode for everyone because there's a lot of interesting news going on that has to do with inflation. Obviously, inflation ties into mortgage rates. And so what we wanted to do is drop a special bonus edition while Melody and I are hard at work on coming up with our topics for Season 7. Um, and whenever we need to talk about finances, we always have a go-to that we go to. And her <laughs> name is Trisha McConkie with Associated Bank. And Trisha, it is awesome to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me again. You know what's kind of spurred this is uh, Robert Dietz, who's the chief economist for the National Association of Home Builders, happened to be in town just a couple of weeks ago, and you invited me to sit at the Associated Bank table, <laughs> which was right up front, which I really appreciate. There was some really interesting conversation because it had to do with the financial side of where we are with the housing industry. And so I talked to Melody, and we really feel like this is a good topic to kind of launch into to help our listeners understand where we are, because I remember we talked about it last year during season six. Obviously, we will focus on it at some point during season seven, or at least some conversation about it. Yes. This is an important topic because financing, whether it's new construction, existing homes, is probably what 90% of the people who are buying homes do. They finance it. Right. That's correct. And yeah. It's always changing. Again, if yes. you went back and listened over the seasons, you can hear what we talked about. You could certainly see how it came to fruition. And I love this breakfast with Robert Dietz every mm -hmm. year. So it's one of the ones that I love to attend. And I was certainly glad that you could uh, join us that day. And he's very knowledgeable. He's been the chief economist at the NAHB for several years. As yes. a matter of fact, you might say decades now, but mm -hmm. he's really sharp. He's on top of it. Uh, the short-term takeaway, and then we'll, we'll dive into it a little bit more, is that Things are looking very bright in the residential industry, whether it's existing or new construction, but there's a little bit of a short window in which I think people might want to consider if they're on the fence or, or on the sidelines right now, thinking about, you know, timing things a little bit to take advantage of, of what appears to be interest rates that should drop for a little bit longer. Now, if we all remember, the Fed was very aggressive over the past couple of years in raising their interest rates. And the interest rates eventually, although they're not tied directly into mortgage rates, they do have an effect on those mortgage rates. Absolutely. We're, we're really tied into the 10-year Treasury note. So kind of explain the difference and what consumers should be looking for there. When they talk about how the Fed either raises rates or lowers rates, it's not a direct connection to what your long-term mortgage rates are because they're really kind of talking about some shorter term rates that mm -hmm. they're affecting. But there is a trickle effect, right, from one to the other. We certainly have seen it in 2023 uh, as we watched rates rise, right? The Fed were raising rates and your long-term rates were also rising. So definitely see the connection. Some of the things you just really want to pay attention to is like that 10-year treasury can be a good indicator. The uh, SOFR rate is also another good indicator. The SOFA? SOFR. I was just joking. <laughs> I, spent the, I spent the day yesterday on the SOFA. It was the weekend. And, okay. Never mind. <laughs> the SOFA rate. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So both of those things can be good indicators to mm -hmm. tell consumers where rates are headed, right? Okay. What those rates are looking like they are doing. You know, the other thing I always tell clients is feel free to reach out to me. So, you know, if you have that trusted uh, mortgage advisor, reach out to them. Let them give you updates. I certainly do that with my clients and just kind of let them know. We'll do a little look back, right? What have rates done in the last three months? What have they done in the last three weeks? And, you know, where do I think they're going to head going forward? So what prompted the rate increases had to do with inflation. The inflation was right. really out of hand. The Fed is trying to cool the inflation to get it under control so the price of everyday goods and services wasn't so high. And what it did, though, is it, it really spiked the interest rates that uh, – mortgage rates, I should say, that the people were paying on their loans. Now, what Robert said is that over this year, and, is, and we're taping this, by the way, in, in February of 2024, but he said that later this year, he expects to see at least three actual rate cuts, which mm -hmm. has to help not only the psychology of our industry, but quite frankly, it's going to help mortgage rates too. 
Correct. Correct. So I know that there has definitely been indicators that they're saying that the Fed has said, quote unquote, right, not any official announcement I think that you could find, but basically that if we stayed on the trajectory where we're at in terms of inflation or we continue to see improvements that, you know, we would definitely see a rate cut by the Fed in the third quarter, followed by, you know, another cut in the fourth quarter as well. Mm-hmm. That obviously is is good news, but as we yes. as we're taping this today, where are interest rates and, and what are your expectations between let's say now and summer before the Fed even possibly gets involved in, and maybe starts to cut? So rates have come down from where they were in 2023. And they were they were, if not at eight, approaching eight. Right. I would say we were at eight. Okay. Absolutely. And they have come back down. Again, it depends on what type of loan, what your credit score is, right? All of those things. And that's always the way it is. Um, But I would say now that we're seeing rates in the mid sixes to, you know, somewhere in those very low sevens. Mm -hmm. So we've seen quite a bit of change when you talk about, right, we were in the eights. And we were, I would say, in those high sevens to eights. We didn't have quite as much range as we're seeing right now. So there's been a lot of headwind made that way. Rates are going down slowly. So what we saw was the opposite, right? In 23, they turned around, they just spiked faster Mm -hmm. than you could get anything done. They were going up. So now we're kind of seeing what I would say is like a trickle down. Doesn't always mean that rates are going down every day, but that yield behind the rate is increasing. And as that yield increases, that's what allows us to lower that interest rate. So we're definitely headed in a positive direction. So let's talk about this in terms of new construction, which is what we're involved in. And you're mm-hmm. a lender to many of our clients. Yes. Um, talk about the programs that you have available. And let's say someone was interested in in thinking about designing and building a home. And let's say that the rates are going to continue to trickle down for the next several months. Mm -hmm. How does that affect someone who might be thinking, well, I need to wait longer until rates come down more? I love that question because it's literally one of my favorite things to talk with potential clients about. Things are picking up. Rates have come down. People are finding interest again in terms of getting back out in that market, right? There were a lot of people who were beat up, lost out. They didn't want to, you know, fight the fight. But now, They're coming off the sidelines. So what I tell people is, if you waited last time, you didn't do it because you said, oh, I want rates to come down or I want the cost to come down and you missed that, you need to get back in. You need to get off the sidelines and get back in. And I say that because, no, rates have not, I think, reached their bottom, if you will. But if you wait until rates reach that bottom, then you're going to miss that opportunity again because you're going to be in line behind everyone else that got off the sidelines before you. And now you're talking a one-year wait or better to get to your project by a builder just because of the number of people that have kind of sat on the sidelines in the Mm -hmm. last year. Another thing with the interest rates is Obviously, it's a big election year. And so I think, again, you're going to really see a drive for rates to continue to go down and and down quite a bit more as we get closer to election. So to that point of waiting on the sidelines for that rate to come down, I, the number of people, it's just going to really pick up. Yeah. And the other thing to keep in mind, too, especially if you're going to find a lot, design a home and build a home, that location of a lot and designing a home can take four to six months up front. Yes. And during that time, you can go ahead and rates can can trickle on down until you have yes. the budget developed and you're ready to build. But I think you have some programs too, Trisha, that, that somewhat protects a buyer or a client, if you will, if, if rates do trickle down while you're trying to put your financing in place and all. Correct. That is one thing I absolutely love about our program. And I would say probably number one thing you would hear from our clients that they love about our program is that we do have a one-time close mortgage that has a construction feature at the beginning once you get to that construction piece. And that interest rate is locked. So you are protected from volatility of the market while the home is under construction. But once that home is complete, we actually offer a conversion option that gives the client the ability to now lock in that lower rate. We're doing it for a flat fee. It depends, again, on on what your loan size and type is, but you're looking at either $350 or $800 to capture the lower rate. 
it is true conversion. So you don't go through the refinance process. So people love it. It goes back to, I think, what a lot of people heard as rates were going up about, right? Love the home, date the rate. Yes. So, <laughs> you know, it is that concept. Get the home you love built while you can get in line and get it done. And then let the expert like me work for you to get that rate and get you exactly where you want to be for a long-term financial position. Now, Associated Bank, I, I want to make sure our listeners understand that Associated Bank might be focused more, what, Midwest? Is yes. That fair? I guess my point being is your program is going to be offered most likely through some other portfolio lenders outside the Midwest. Yes. So if we have someone who's listening to this, make sure you find a lender that might be able to meet your needs in your market, but look for the loan that you describe. Absolutely. I would agree. And honestly, I have people who reach out to me from this podcast that are in states that perhaps Associated Bank doesn't lend in. Mm -hmm. But I have been in this industry for 26 years. So I've developed a lot of partners, friendships, if you will, with other people in the business who we rely on each other to um, refer clients to that we know will take very good care of them just as if we would. If somebody reaches out to me and it's perhaps a state that I cannot do, I can often recommend a lender and highly recommend them where you would be very well taken care of. Good, good information. Um, one other thing that I wanted to to bring up is the, the reason that I believe now is a good time is because another thing that Robert Dietz was talking about is he believes the lower rates are going to be here through 2025. And he believes that um, those lower rates are going to spur another big jump in the in the new construction market. And I agree with that. The reason that I tell people to seriously consider over the next six to eight months jumping in and, and, and building your new home, we don't want to see what happened to 2021. Remember back then when there was so much interest in building and so many people who wanted to build that it drove the construction industry prices very high, very yes. quickly? I don't want that to happen again because it wasn't controlled. It wasn't sustainable. I'm afraid we're, we might be headed into that same direction. Not right away. I think that probably by first or second quarter of 2025, that could happen if we have a lot of people who jump back into the market. So get ahead of it. Prices are stable. It's really a good time. Interest rates are coming down. That's why I think there's a window here, six, eight months, maybe 12 months, in order to to start your new construction project. No, I absolutely agree. And another one of the things he said is, right, our, there's such a huge housing gap, right? There's not enough housing available to yeah. the number of people who are interested in the market and getting a home. So it's going to create quite a rush effect into construction yeah. because that's where the solution is going to come from. There's not not enough existing inventory and the gap is growing. So the only way to fill that gap is going to be construction. Good advice. Trisha, always thank you so much for joining us. This has been, uh, it's, it's been fun to catch up with you and offer our listeners a bonus episode of what's going on in the financial market, the interest rates, the mortgage rates, because it's a very interesting time out there. And I think this information is very helpful to them. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. No problem. And as I mentioned at the top of the show, Melody and I continue to work on uh, season seven. So thanks everyone for listening. Enjoy your winter. For more information, visit www.artofcustompodcast.com or find us on Facebook and LinkedIn as The Art of Custom. Be sure to subscribe to get the latest episodes and please rate and review. The Art of Custom is produced by Hug Monster Sound with original music by Adam Frickfordine. Thanks for listening.